Hard to believe that July is already over. It felt like the month just kind of flew by. I don't know about you, but this is probably because July has been a fairly busy month for my family. There's been time off of work and vacation and a little bit of traveling and stuff like that. And I haven't had as much time as I would have liked to to get through games. It's funny, I always go into summer thinking that I'm going to get a lot of playing done. There'll be less, you know, scheduled stuff and and our routine is is a little bit more laid back sometimes, but that doesn't really wind up being the case as things always kind of get busy and summer is maybe not as scheduled, but there's always things to do. So even so, I was still at least able to get one game finished at the very end of the month whenever things kind of died down on our schedules a little bit. And that game is Ashen. So after a couple of months of not even being played and on this list at the end of the month, Ashen makes a comeback only to be put on the completed list. I was finally able to beat both the boss I was stuck on and the final boss after that. I had trouble on both, but the nice thing with the final boss is that it didn't have nearly as long of a dungeon in front of her as the boss before that. So it was a lot easier to go back and replay, even though I had to die a number of times on her. It was just not quite as frustrating to get to her, which made a huge difference. Now, I don't think I'm going to be going for the Platinum in this game. It has one trophy left for the main game that I don't have, and that requires a playthrough on a harder difficulty mode. And that just doesn't really sound fun to me. So many other games waiting in my backlog that taking the time to do this, which would probably be more frustrating than fun, just isn't something I want to do. Ashen just wasn't my favorite game. It's solid, don't get me wrong. It's, it's not like it's a bad game, but it just makes some questionable choices like long dungeons in front of very difficult bosses that really hinders it. I understand it's a Souls-like and it's supposed to be difficult, but I don't know, it just felt like it kind of didn't have the feeling where you could progress past a certain point, like you just like had to kind of keep trying with what you had and hope that eventually you just learned it well enough and had some of these decisions like really long, hard dungeons in front of bosses that were also hard that it just kind of made it frustrating for me more than kind of the sense of like accomplishment. I'm happy I beat it. I wanted to make sure I beat it, but I'm kind of happy to move on from it at this point too. In addition to finishing that game this month, I also started a few new games. So I've been playing through the story of a few, a few new games this past month. The first of these is Immortal Redneck. This game is kind of strange in a number of different ways, but I, I do like it. You play a redneck that goes off to Egypt, which doesn't sound like a very redneck thing to do, in my opinion. But while he's in Egypt, he winds up dying or at least getting injured really severely and being turned into some immortal mummy type thing. It's just kind of a weird theme. But in terms of gameplay, it's a first person shooter roguelike with and it's a lot of fun to play. I've been enjoying going through it and blasting people. You try to, you're trying to defeat three pyramids, at least I think three pyramids. I've only gotten to the first one. I haven't really gotten any further than that. But if you die, you have to start the pyramid over. And like a rogue light, you do get to use the money you collect during your journey to upgrade your character before you go in again. So you can increase your damage and your health and your ammo recovery and things like that. You get incrementally stronger as you progress. It's also strange kind of content wise because... The redneck is rather vulgar and swears and drops all kinds of F-bombs and like his little quips and stuff like that. But in terms of gameplay, the game is just tame, like doesn't really have any blood or gore. Like the monsters aren't really particularly scary or horror themed. It's just kind of a weird clash of like they didn't really know who they wanted to make the game for. They had this edgy sayings with lots of swearing, but no real like gore or blood or anything like that that would make kind of a mesh a little bit better. So it's just kind of strange in that regard. But as I said, despite it kind of being kind of these clashing tones that don't really fully fit, in my opinion, it's really quite fun. And I'm going to be starting some playthrough videos of it next week. I've been wanting to add some content beyond game recommendations and these monthly overviews that I'm doing now. And that looks like what I'll be trying to do is get when I'm playing some games that I think would work good for for overviews to kind of put those up as, as playthroughs and see how that goes. So we'll see how that one fares. The second game I started playing this month and am in the story of is the Cube Escape Collection. Here is a collection of games that I think originated as Flash games that were available for free online. With Flash dying off, the developers put them all into one package that you could buy via Steam. And the Cube Escape Collection is a series of room escape games with a mystery and surreal horror theme. It's said that the series is heavily inspired by Twin Peaks, but as someone who hasn't ever watched Twin Peaks, that only means so much to me. I know that it kind of means like it's a little weird, a little strange, kind of has that surreal element to it, but I don't really know fully what that encapsulates. But that said, 
I still really enjoy my time with the game. Its puzzles are a bit on the random side, but they're rather fun to figure out. There are some kind of creepy, weird, again, that surreal aspect to the game, but I kind of find a hard time calling it scary a lot of the time. There are a few jump scares that I have like startled, but like it's just kind of more a, a kind of creepy, morose kind of atmosphere at times. It's not even all the time. It's just some of the times where you kind of get some weird stuff that goes on. And you're like, wait, what? What's this about? Also, I can't really tell you much about the story. I, I know that it's dealing with the murder of a woman and investigating her death. There's a detective that gets involved, but everything's a little twisted around and I'm not really sure about the details here because then, you know, you start getting like people with animal heads involved and I don't know, it just gets a little weird. And that's cool. Like it kind of isn't interesting and it makes you want to try to fit all the pieces together but i'm certainly not there yet the third game this month is moon hunters and here's a game that i was started playing with my family it's a four-person co-op action rpg it's interesting as each game you play of this is a very short time frame there's just five days that you have in it which basically each day is the equivalent of finishing a level so if you go to a town you talk to the people there and whatever then leave that's that's a day if you go to a certain level and beat it and camp for that night then that's a day and so like you have various things that go on that shapes your character you know like what you do when you camp and influences your stats you can also interact with people and how you answer them will change like what kind of attributes you have like whether you're wise or foolish or whether you're patient or violent or you know the various various things that change depending on your responses so it's kind of neat in that regard because it's kind of procedurally generated kind of feeling to it that that things just kind of are randomized each playthrough and and it's it's kind of interesting we've only played through twice so i don't know how well it stays as you kind of continue playing through it but i've really enjoyed it we've all really enjoyed it actually so far so i'm, I'm hoping that it does kind of have legs to be enjoyed you know even if it's not for forever to, to be able to get a number of playthroughs out of it and and say hey this was this was a good game and we'll, so we'll see how how that goes if we if we continue to play it so next are games that i've been playing online these games are ones that don't necessarily have a story and are games that i play on and off through the month so they aren't games that i'm necessarily playing a lot but they are games I've played. Now, a lot of these are repeats from previous months, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on them, but I do want to hit on them. Uh, so the first one is Fortnite. Fortnite is a game that I probably, one of my favorites, probably the game right now that I've been playing the most consistently for the longest amount of time. I just finished up the, the basic battle pass, the level 100, got Darth Vader, so I'm pretty happy about that. I just did that today, the day that I'm recording this, actually. So that's that's pretty cool. I've also been enjoying the, the summer quests and events that have been going on. Also fun to see the map changes with the blooms popping up at the different locations and kind of how it's shifting the, the looks of, of certain areas. So yeah, I mean, I just bottom line, I enjoy Fortnite. Fortnite's probably one of my favorite online battle royale games. It still is. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. It's a game that I play with my whole family and just winds up being a, a good time pretty much every time we play it. Second game is Splitgate. I've also been continuing to play Splitgate. I don't feel like I'm making the amount of progress on the battle pass that I have previously. I'm not sure whether that's just my perspective on it or whether that's re reality, but I do play this fairly regularly. I'll play a game or two or a round or two every day or something like that. Maybe a few days miss, but I'm a little over halfway on the battle pass and hopefully I can complete it before the end of the season. Third game on the online list here is Brawlhalla. And as I've said the last few months, I'm still playing a round or two off and on here to get three of my characters leveled up to 25. It's slow work, but we're getting progress. I'm leveling up or, you know, getting closer to a level up every month. So I'm making progress. It's just slow, it takes a lot of time, and I don't put a lot of time into the game. I just play it every off and on. So the fourth game is Gems of War. Gems of War added a new kingdom on its main map. So that's been kind of cool. And I've been working on unlocking it. I haven't been playing this a whole lot, but I, like I'll get on and maybe mm, two or three times a week and we'll play a couple boards and say okay I'm, I'm good for that and move on so so i'm working on unlocking that new new kingdom and that'll be kind of fun fifth game is balloons td6 i played a bit of balloons but not a lot i played some collection event that's going on this past month and also played some co-op with family but haven't played it as much as some months i probably played it two maybe three times over the past month so not a lot but i had to play it and the last game here on the online games is fall guys Fall Guys went free to play this past month and also had a crossover with Fortnite, so I gave it a try. I already had it before it went free to play, but jumped back in to see how it was, see if it's changed too much. It's still fun. It isn't a game that I enjoy playing a lot of because it does get kind of frustrating and repetitive and also has really long load time sometimes between events, which kind of gets a little annoying, but it's fun for a few rounds and that's really all I've played of it 
in the past month. I really didn't enjoy the crossover skin with Fortnite, the major man cake or whatever wasn't one I was like super excited about. So I just kind of didn't really invest a lot of time in it, but I did play a few rounds. There is also a game that I played going after some trophies achievements for this month. In some ways it could be considered another game that I completed as I finished the main story mode at the either the end of last month or the very beginning of this month. And that is Katamari Damacy Reroll. And so the majority of the time that I have played this month, I've been working towards the final trophy, which is to collect all the items in the game. It's kind of a, a difficult, long, grindy trophy. But I started doing it. And basically, right now, I'm just trying to go back to the le- all the levels and find the cousins that appear in the levels and then just trying to roll up as much as I can, hoping that I get some things that I haven't rolled up before in the midst of that. And then if I don't, I'll go back and see what I have left to collect, you know, take them out one by one. Finally, we have what I call endless games, games that don't necessarily have a set end or even if they have a story that you can still kind of play beyond and there's not really an end point that you have to have. You can just kind of play. These are usually creative games, party games, that kind of stuff. The first of these is Terraria. Now, I've been continuing to play a world with my kids over their summer break. I think the only pre-hard mode boss that we haven't beaten is the Wall of Flesh, which then would take us in the hard mode. I think we, if we probably went and fought him, we'd probably be able to take him out, but we haven't done that yet. And so we're still kind of trying to get as strong as we can before tackling that. Now, I've been working on also making a pretty cool little base out of three living trees that spawned really close together on our map. You know, I've been doing that, trying to, you know, get items, get stronger, you know, trying to do things like that to to fight some bosses and, and kind of continue to progress into hard mode um, because that's always a big jump. So so we've we had a lot of fun with that and we maybe didn't get as far and progress as much as we would have liked this month just with being busy, but we're still making some progress and having a lot of fun doing so. Second game. Here is Jackbox Party Pack 2. Now, I don't think this month is the first month we've played Jackbox Party Pack 2, but this is the first month that I remembered to actually include it and take some footage of us playing it. So whatever. It's a lot like the first Jackbox Party Pack with some different games involved. Some of them are some the same games or like a sequel game to ones from the first one and another ones are completely new. It's a lot of fun for a party or get together. Some games are a little bit better than others, just like with the first one. And playing with just the four of us is maybe a bit on the low end. It'd maybe be a little bit more fun with more for the majority of the games anyway, but we still have fun with it whenever we do play. The last game on the list and the last endless is One Finger Death Punch. Now here's a game that I recommended in one of my Gold Star game videos this month. So if you want to learn more about it, feel free to check it out. Um, However, One Finger Death Punch is a pretty simplistic beat-em-up where you're taking on hordes of enemies using only two buttons. It's a game that requires a lot of focus and good reflexes. I really enjoy playing it. It's a game that's a lot of fun. It's really simple, but does require that that a lot of focus. And it's a game that easily be like, ah, I want to play a couple rounds. And that turns into like an hour of playing it if I have the time. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And I do recommend checking that one out too. And that's what I've been playing for July of 2022. I tried to have a little bit more variety this month than I did last month, even though we were a little bit busier. I tried to be a little bit more intentional about starting some new games and and playing them through the month. But even then, I would have liked to complete more, get through a few more things. I didn't necessarily do that. But enough about what I've played. What have you been playing? Are you playing new releases, games out of your backlog, some old favorites, or a variety of games this month? I'd love to hear from you in the comments about what games you've been playing lately. Thanks for taking a look at the video. If you enjoyed watching it, I put out recommendations and other video game content like this every week. You can subscribe and keep up with any new releases that I put out. So I hope that you are having a a great day and we will see you next time.